Hello, this is the next video in a playlist that I'm calling General Linear Models Design of Experiments. And this is part two of a little mini-series on balanced incomplete block designs. And this, the topic for this video is the column spaces of the design matrix. And so as a reminder, the model that we're in is y equals x beta plus epsilon, and it, we can partition it into the uh, treatment effect, the block effect, and then this is a column of ones for mu. So tau 1 through tau A, beta 1 through beta B, you know, plus epsilon, epsilon's multivariate normal, mean vector 0, variance covariance matrix, sigma squared I. Now, for what we do next, we're going to move all the columns of x tau to the end. That means we'll have to move this vector to the bottom. That's kind of what we do here. But this column of ones, we're going to just put into this matrix here. So what we do is we come down. So this is the same, but we rearrange it a little differently. So the columns are 100% the same. The parameters are 100% the same. They're just organized a little bit differently. So when we do this multiplication, the beta gets multiplied by x beta. And in this beta parameter, there's the mu parameter, right? We're just encompassing all that into, into one, OK? So here's our model. And of course, when we multiply this out, we get um, x beta times beta, x tau times tau. So now to this model, we're going to add what's called a well-chosen zero. And so we add a quantity and subtract the same quantity, right? So this, you know, the y and then, you know, x beta, beta, x tau, tau, that's this. We've added zero and then we have epsilon. So the model has not changed, okay? But what we do is we take this x and this and we group them and we right factor out a tau and an x tau, right? So what's left over is the identity matrix minus m beta. <laughs> My cat wants out if you can hear him meowing. And over here, we, you know, we just kind of use matrix multiplication. So the beta is here and the tau, and then x or not this one, but this one. So the x beta comes down, and then this m beta x tau is here, right? And then the tau is there. So, so, so far, this model up here is 100% the same as this, 100% the same as this, because we just added zero, 100% the same of this, Just we just rearranged it. Now, M beta, if you've watched any of the previous videos, it's what's called a perpendicular projection matrix onto the column space of X beta. And you get that by x beta times x beta prime, x beta, generalized inverse x beta. Now, that's because of the columns of x beta are not full column rank. And mainly because we incorporated this 1 into this beta. So that, um, that, that's a dependent vector. So it's not independent of these, right? If you add all the columns here, you get the 1 vector, okay? So this is actually equivalent to x beta. So if we take out that column of ones and recalculate this perpendicular projection matrix, then this is full column rank and it becomes an inverse and they're the same. And in later videos, I think we use this because it's easier to calculate. So, and so it's a perpendicular projection matrix on the column space of x beta. So now a few notes, and this becomes important. M beta is a perpendicular projection matrix onto the column space of X beta. So if you take any vector, any matrix, and then pre-multiply it by M beta, that shoves it down into the column space of X beta. So this quantity is in, in the column space of X beta, right? So if it's in already in the column space of X beta, then that means if we look at the column space of this augmented matrix, all these are, are dependent vectors. They're not independent of what's already here. So the column space of this augmented matrix is still just the column space of X beta. Now, 
if you take I minus that perpendicular projection matrix on the column uh, M beta, so the perpendicular projection matrix on the column space of X beta, this becomes the perpendicular projection matrix onto the orthogonal complement space of the column space of X beta, right? So it's a perpendicular projection matrix onto this. So if you take any vector, or any matrix, and pre-multiply this, it kind of shoves it down into that orthogonal complement space. So that means that if any vectors in the column space of B, X beta, and in the orthogonal complement space of X beta, that means their product's going to be zero. They're orthogonal to each other. So this is here, and X beta is, you know, so those have to be orthogonal to each other. Right? Now, since M beta X tau lives in the calm space of X beta, we can actually rewrite this as X beta times gamma, and that's for some gamma, right? It's a linear combination of the columns of X beta, it, right? That If this lives in there, then this is true. So now let's look at this model that, that we had up here, you know, this piece here, this piece. We're going to bring it down then when we multiply this through we get this right but this m beta x tau can be changed with x beta gamma for some gamma right those are equivalent but then we can left factor out an x beta and then these are all parameters unknown parameters so we could actually just add them together and call it something different say alpha right so this parameterization can be thought of as x beta alpha so thus the model and I'm, I'm going to flash and I don't like going back and forth so in this model here we're going to replace this with x beta alpha and then this will keep the same so that's what we do here. Right. Now, since this is a parameter and this is a parameter, we can use matrix multiplication and get this, right? So if we multiply this back, then we get this product here. Now, here's our model. And so if you think about it, this is this is the, the design matrix or X, and this is our vector of parameters. So we're back into that linear model setting. But these column spaces are orthogonal. And then we get some nice properties because of that. So we will use this model to find the least squares estimates for tau, right? And since they're orthogonal, we actually only need this, we need y, these columns, and tau. And then we can find the least squares estimate. So once we find the least squares estimate for tau, then we'll use it to find the least squares estimates for beta back in the original video. And that's going to be our next video. I mean, in, in the original model, that's going to be our next video. Now, the perpendicular projection matrices, remember our column space. These are our two column spaces. We have this and this. And they're orthogonal to each other. So since they're orthogonal, the perpendicular projection matrix onto this whole column space, and we'll call it M, is the sum of the perpendicular projection matrices. So it's the perpendicular projection matrix onto X beta and the perpendicular projection matrix onto this column space. And I have a video called the sum of perpendicular projection matrices that prove that if you want more details. So the perpendicular projection matrix onto this column space we'll call M tau. And it's just this column space um, this column space transpose times this and then generalized inverse but but the way the i minus m beta it's item potent so we can we when multiply together we get just we can just keep one of them here and then we get this transpose which is this x transpose x tau transpose i minus m beta so thus the perpendicular projection matrix under that whole column space which we call m is m beta plus tau and that's pretty amazing. And so we can write it in full 
notation here. And we'll, we'll switch back and forth between just simply this and this, depending upon what we're doing. And, and all this becomes really important in upcoming videos. Well, that's all I have for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.